Okay, we're starting this video a little bit differently than the others, aren't we? Because um, Crescent Lasai, who is Kat's mother's girl, um, partner, is testifying. However, the copy that we had um, from Law and Crimes, I think, started more or less halfway through a testimony or something. Yeah, it did. So we had to go and get um, a version from Court TV. We've got no idea if we're going to get struck or, or penalised for using their footage. Time will tell, but um, yeah, we'll start it off with the uh, Crescent's testimony and go from there. So this is day three, isn't it? It is, yeah. Right, let's go. Crescent Lasai, C-R-E-S-E-N-T, L apostrophe S-A-I. And Ms. Lasai, um, do you know somebody by the name of Dulce Melander? Yes, I do. How do you know her? Uh, she's my girlfriend. Okay. And uh, does she refer to you often as Cress? Yes, everyone mostly does. Okay. And you can as well. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know somebody by the name of Catherine Melander? Yes, I do. How do you know her? Uh, I know her through Dulce. She's her daughter. Okay. And through Catherine or Cat, did you become acquainted with somebody by the name of Chandler Halderson? Yes. And I'd ask, I'd, the judge will probably ask everyone to remove their masks, besides you and the jury, um, but could you see Mr. Halderson Chandler in the courtroom today? Yes, look, I do. As you look at the faces, I'll ask everyone not in the jury box to lower their mask and then replace their mask, please. Go ahead and answer the question, if you could. Yes. Could you just let us know where he's seated and perhaps the color of his shirt? Well, he's sitting over across the room over there. He's got a blue tie on. Okay, I'd ask the record to reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. It shall. Okay. Mr. Blue tie on. Yeah. Should be yellow, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. What sort of relationship did you have with Chandler? in June or so of 2021. This year? Yes. Well, well last year technically, because it's January, but yes. True, yeah. Um, well, you know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time with Chandler. I mean, you know, I don't know him through Catherine mostly. Most sure. of the times I saw him were either with get-togethers or, or through her. Okay. And roughly, where do you live? Uh, in Cottage Grove, okay. in the town. In a rural part of Cottage Grove? Yes. Okay. And Please forgive me for stating this, everyone, but for me, I've got to talk about the elephant in the room. I'm getting huge Gary Busey vibes here. <laughs> yeah. Just while I approach you, I'm going to put my mask on. Thank you. Nobody's ever complained. I was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you what's been marked and received as Exhibit 57. Is this an overhead picture of your property in Cottage Grove? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so your house, you can barely see the roof right there. Is that correct? That's correct. It's in the wooded area. Okay. And that's like the top half, almost right in the middle of Exhibit 57. And this is a barn or a shed? Yeah, it's an old tobacco shed. Okay. And right here, this is a pool? Yes. Okay. And all of this wooded area, is that your property? Yes. And there's more property over here that's not shown. True. That's uh, what is on that property? You mean the part that's unseen? Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's all grassy area. It's in a, a CRP program, a set-aside program, so it's just for wildlife. So it's like wildflowers. Some people might describe it as like a briar, like little yeah, bushes. Yeah, there can be, there's actually wild raspberries and things that okay. can grow in there, right? Gorgeous property, isn't it? It is. It's really nice. Yeah, I'd love to own something like that. Mind you, I have problems with our bloody garden, don't I? <laughs> Never yeah. mind something like that. <laughs> Before July 4th weekend, how many times approximately had Chandler been out to your property? Ooh, I couldn't say exactly. I could give you an estimate. Sure. You an know, estimate like, is just fine. Like 10 or 12 times, maybe. Okay. Um, and did he ever come out there prior to the July 4th weekend by himself, or was he always with somebody else? 
He always was with someone else. He'd never come out there alone before that I'm aware of. Okay. And generally, I assume that was his girlfriend, Kat? Yeah. She was always with him. Okay. It is a bit unusual, that, isn't it? It's very unusual, if you think about it. Yeah, like him turning up just out of the blue on his own. It's like if your best friend's husband came around for a cup of coffee, isn't it? Well, yeah, you'd be thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, and I'm, preci- I'm pretty sure that's precisely what went through Cressy's head. <laughs> yeah. And prior to July 4th weekend, what understanding did you have as far as what Chandler did for a living? Well, what I understood is he'd gotten a job at American Family. He was working there as far as I knew. And did did you have any understanding as if he was attending school or not? Um, I wasn't, I knew he had been in school, but I, I didn't know if he was going to school recently, but I knew he was in school. He was getting okay. ready to graduate. Okay. Um, do you see Chandler, Chandler Halderson over the July 4th weekend? Yes. And what day did you see him? On Sunday. So July 4th itself? Yes. Um, how did Mr. Halderson behave on that day? Well, he kind of seemed a little lot not like his self. That Can you sense. describe that? What do you mean by that? Um, he just seemed kind of off, like kind of weird, actually. <laughs> okay. Um... I mean, I remember asking him how he felt, you know, because I just, he just kind of seemed. Okay. You asked him how he felt. What, it, what did you remember how he responded? Yeah. He just said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay or I'm doing the best that I can. And because he um, had an accident, he fell down the stairs or something. So I thought maybe it was because of the accident that he was acting off. Sure. Was he displaying any physical symptoms on July 4th? Not that I, not that I saw, no. Okay. Um, was he wearing a neck brace at all on July 4th when you saw him? No. Um, did he act in any way that he seemed like disabled? Um, did he have any trouble walking or anything like that? No, I didn't notice that. Okay. It's a medical miracle, isn't it? It sure is. A complete recovery within three or four days. Praise the Lord, it's a miracle. (laughs) Um, Did you have any one-on-one conversations with Chandler on July 4th? Yes. Tell me about that. Well, shortly after um, he was done eating, the kids were sitting at the table in my family room. <clears throat> and they had gotten up and I was kind of walking towards the kitchen and he approached me and asked me if he could have my phone number, my personal phone number, because um, he wanted to know if he could come and use the pool. Okay. Did you give him your number? Yeah, I gave him my cell number and I also gave him my, my landline. Okay. Because I don't always answer my cell phone and I don't have voicemail on my cell phone. Okay. Did you guys um, have any further discussion on that day? I don't recall. Okay. Um, so obviously prior to July 4th, he didn't have your number to your knowledge. Not to my knowledge. I didn't give it to him. Okay. And in all fairness, when you hung out with Chandler prior to July 4th, it was always with other people. Yes. Namely, um, Dulce and her family. Correct. Okay. As of July 4th, did you have any knowledge about the whereabouts of Chandler's parents? No, I, I didn't even know their names. <laughs> did you know whether or not, did, had you heard any stories or anything about them being missing at this point? No. Okay. A fact that Chandler, Kat and Dulcie failed to mention to her. Because yeah. Kat would have known and Dulcie would have known. Of course they would have. So the, someone would have said something. So how come no one told Cress? That's what I want to know. Um, let's fast forward to the next day, Monday, July 5th. 
Did you have any interactions with Chandler on Monday, July 5th? Yes. Um, wh what's the first interaction you had with Chandler on that day? Oh, the first interaction was I opened up my window. I, you know, I live in a two-story, and I saw a car in my driveway. I came in from outside to get a drink of water, and I saw a car, and it didn't recognize the car. And someone was standing in my driveway, and it was, it was Chandler. Oh, yes, Captain Subaru. Pratt. Okay. So I opened the window because he was kind of standing holding his phone and, and looking around. And so I opened the window and I said, I asked him if he was OK. And he said, yeah. And I said, oh, I said, are you here to use the pool? And he said, yeah, would that be all right? And I said, yeah, sure. Were you expecting Chandler that day? No. OK. All right, so he, do you remember about what time he showed up to use your pool? Just approximate, if you remember. It was, it was in the afternoon. I just remember coming in. It was really hot that day. I was working on a project, and so I came in to get a drink of water, so it was probably mid-afternoon-ish, I would say. Okay. And what was Chandler like when, when you talked to him right there um, about using the pool? Was there anything noteworthy? You mean when he was in the driveway? Yeah. Well, he just looked a little kind of spaced out a little bit, you know. Sure. That's why I was kind of, you know, because he kept looking, looking around and holding his phone and, you know. I'm guessing he's probably got an app on his phone that keeps track of all his bullshit and he was waving that crap around. That's probably what he was doing. Either that, but more likely he was looking for a place if there was a place there where he could put some of the remains yeah possibly possibly taking photos like i said i was just a little startled because i'm like who's who's here you know sure your property is pretty remote yeah it is and your property just to clear things up is in dane county wisconsin correct okay um so what happened after you told chandler he could use the pool um well he drove up, you know, because if you come, I live on a hill, and when you come to the driveway, it's kind of in the middle of the hill, and so you have to drive further up the hill to where the pool is. So he, he drove up there. Okay. Um, did you see at this time when he was going to use the pool, did you see at this time where he parked? No. No, I did not see where he had parked at that time. Okay. All right. So he, do you guys have any further discussion before he goes to use the pool? Um, he, he did come down to where I was working on my project, which was putting on a ramp on my deck. I was putting a ramp so that my father and my brother could get up and down the, the deck in their, on the scooter and the wheelchairs. Okay. And so when I was working on that, he had come down. Was he come? There's a hill that comes leads down to my house, and he'd come walking down that hill. And then we had a conversation. What did you guys talk about? Well, um, he was telling me about his accident. He said he was at a doctor's appointment. And so he was talking to me about what the doctor had said and what was going on. Did he tell you when that appointment had been? I don't remember. Okay. Um, what did he say occurred? Well, he told me that he had, like, damage. And I asked him where, and he said, in this area of his head. After careful consideration of this case, and indeed the person charged with the murder, I've come to... An inescapable conclusion. Uh, Chandler Halderson is what my dad used to refer to as a big girl's blouse. <laughs> Absolutely. In the back of his head. And All right. That, so you put, you put your hand right yeah, above he, the he top of your back, neck. Back here, yeah. Okay. In the back of his head. And he's, did he elaborate on what that damage was? Well, he said it wasn't good, that they might have to do some surgery or something, and that he said he was having trouble like with numbers, and he said he got lost, he had to use a GPS, he's just like, said his mind was kind of messed up and wasn't thinking so well. Okay. I wonder what would happen if a fly landed on his head? Oh Jesus, he'd get a brain hemorrhage in Jossie, wouldn't he? 
Yeah. Did you guys discuss anything besides just his physical health? Uh, yeah, I, I asked him, you know, how basically how he was, you know, overall doing and about his job because he said he had was getting a new job in Florida and I asked him about that and like was what did he say? Well, he said that he probably wasn't going to get the job that some manager had told him that it wasn't going to work out because of his injury that he wasn't able to work. And then I'd asked him about maybe he could go back to American Family and he said no, he didn't. He said that wouldn't happen, he wouldn't be able to do that. So he seemed concerned about, you know, maybe not having a job and what was he gonna kind of do. And I asked him, you know, would he talk to his parents? You know, maybe could he talk to them or, you know, things like that just to try to reassure him because he just seemed upset about this news that he had gotten from the doctor. It's ironic, isn't it? Yeah. He, he murdered the only two people who really had the motivation and the means to help him. And he just squashed it. Yeah. Murdered them without a care, without a second thought. And he hasn't even shown one ounce of remorse for what he did. Certainly not during the interrogation. And from what little we've seen of him, you know, during this trial, when the cameras flashed at him, he's just been staring ahead like a zombie beneath that mask. Yeah, and if you could look his eyes, I bet his eyes are dead. Yeah. But it's just so ironic that he destroyed the very thing that could have helped him and could have got him out of this. Because, like we said a few episodes ago, his parents might have been mad at him, but they never would have given up. He was their son. Of course, they wouldn't just abandon him. So Maybe he thought that they would. Who knows? Absolutely senseless, this, isn't it? There's no motive. Sure, and what did he respond to that? To what? To, to, I'm sorry, to talk to the idea of talking to his parents about his job and health. And he said, no, they're, they're still up north. And, and I just says, well, you know, maybe it would help you to talk to them. And his response is, he says, no, they'll just be mad, and, which seemed odd to me why his parents would be upset with him, that he was hurt and couldn't work. You know, it just seemed odd to me. Okay. Um, how long do you think this conversation took took place? Oof. I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. Um, what happened after the conversation? Well, I think, I'm trying to remember, Dulce showed up. Um, she'd come. I wasn't expecting her, but she had come to the house, and she came through the house we were sitting on the deck and she came and was like what's going on and I said oh well I'm just chatting with Chandler here and I guess he doesn't have such good news and then she came out and sat down and asked what was going on and then we started to kind of go back over what him and I had talked about to explain to her what was happening. Sure. And the jury's already had the opportunity to hear from Dulce, so I, I don't need you to repeat anything that she said. Okay. But what kind of happened next in the events of Well, then he day? went to go use the pool, because before he'd come down and I'd asked him, you know, how was the pool? He didn't answer. And, and so he went, said he was going to go back to use the pool. And then Dulce and I continued to talk because we just felt something was a little odd, okay. you know, so we were concerned and her and I had a conversation about him of what was going on. Okay. And then what happened after that? Well, I kind of got irritated. It was so hot and I wanted to go swimming and I was waiting <laughs> for him to be done using the pool so I could go jump in the pool. And so I was getting impatient and waiting, you know, wondering what was taking him so long. So I said, look, I, I'm, I'm going to go get in the pool. I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm hot and I'm tired and I, I want to go cool off. And she said, OK. So she went to go get her suit. And then her and I, I have this little riding lawnmower. And so we got on the riding lawnmower to go up to tell him, hey, we're going to go swimming now. And when we, when we got up there, he wasn't in the pool and the, the cover was still on the pool. And OK, so hold on. The, the pool has a cover. Yeah, I have like a like a solar. It heats up. It helps get the water warm, so it just lays flat on the top. Sure. So it's got like little bubble. And obviously, you have to remove said cover to get into the pool. Yeah, there's times I got lazy where I could fold it over just to get in, but I usually like to take it off so I could have the. Whole Was it pool. folded over so somebody could get in at all? No. 
if you go into tally, you're going to use the pool. Even if you're not going to use the pool, you make it appear as though you've used the pool. Oh yeah, you take the bleeding cover off, at least. Do, do we need to write a book called Common Sense 101 and dedicate it to this chump? I think we do. All right, so the covers on the pool is Chandler in sight when you're over by the pool. No. Okay, and just is it exhibit 57, here's the pool, the round blue. This is an aerial photo, so it almost just looks like a dot. Right, that's the pool area. Okay, so what do you do next? Well, when we drove up and I could, you could kind of see no one was in the pool, and I didn't see, I was looking for him, and then I, when I looked to my right, when we came up the hill, I had the doors open in the shed, and I could see through the shed that his car was parked on the other side of the shed. All right, can you, can you approach Exhibit 57 here and kind of point to where you saw Chandler's vehicle? Um, we came up, there's a hill up here, and we came up and we could see through the doors. You could. The car was parked right about here. Okay. Thank you. So he was parked kind of near, this is some wood and an oil drum. Yeah, there's uh, a pile of timber logs and then it's like my scrap junk pile for metal and things. Fair. And it's kind of near the wooded line here. Right here. Okay. All right. So. It is possible he could have uh, deposited some of the body parts either in the oil drum, which sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, or in the wood pile or around the wood pile. Yeah, because, um, and also if it's in near wooded area, animals. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, the evidence would pretty much disappear. They'd pick it clean to the bone, wouldn't they? In the wood, yeah. I'm not the best estimator, Judge. I would say four inches south of the barn, maybe one inch above the oil tank on Exhibit 57 is the area that the witness pointed. That seems to be a fair description, yes. Okay. I'm going to have you sit down just so we can hear you nice and loud on that microphone. Okay. Um, so what do you do? You see his... Oh, well, hold on one second. Uh, can, do you remember what kind of vehicle he was driving that day? It was like a little station wagon, like a hatchback. I, okay. It might have been a Subaru. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, do you know, was the hatch open, closed, something the, else? The back hatch, the back was open. Okay. Um, all right, so that's where you observe the car, the back hatch, or if you're not a car person like me, you say the trunk was open. What do you do? Well, yeah, because uh, we go and he's not in the pool and we see the car, and then I'm like, what the heck is going What is he doing? And, and I said, well, I'm going to go over, and, and Dulcie was like, we were like, what's he doing? You know, what is going on? Sure. So we drove over to see if he was in the back of the car. Was he sleeping? What was he, what was he doing? Was he smoking weed or something? We didn't know. So uh, we drove over there and with the mower and approached, and I drove to the back of the car because the, the back end was backed oh, towards me. Okay, so the back end was facing closer to the barn or the oil drum? To the, to the, to the, towards me. The front end was facing the shed. Oh, towards you right now. <laughs> yes, towards okay, me so right toward now. Okay, so toward the woods, towards the wood yes, line, so it was facing the this way. trunk hatch was is up. up. So okay. I drove, we drove in the mower and drove to the back of the car because I thought maybe he was in the back of the car sure. taking a nap or I don't know. And we look in there and there wasn't anything in the car that we could see. Yeah, it looks like you were right. It looks like he was uh, depositing them in the wooded area. I think they did find some of them, but like we said, you know, some of the body parts still haven't been found, have they? No, and I think we, I think animals might have gotten them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and at this point, you see the car, it's empty, or it's, there's no Chandler in it. Uh, do you see Chandler anywhere on your property? No, because then we stopped and we're like, what the heck? We're looking around, we're, what's he doing? Where is he? And, and you know, Dulce was kind of upset at that moment because she's thinking maybe he's doing drugs or something. She was really upset, thinking maybe well, he's doing drugs or something. What the okay. hell is he doing? So I said, I don't know, but I'm done. I'm going to get in the pool. I just was hot and irritated and just didn't want to deal with it. And so I said, I'm going to the pool. So we left and drove and parked the mower by the pool. Okay, so you took your mower drove back over by the pool and parked and then proceeded and got in the pool okay 
So you're in the pool. Um, when is the next time you see Chandler? Do you want me to show you on that Absolutely, map? I would love that. Well, Why don't you do it and then I'll say it again so it's in the mic. Um, I, we were in the pool and I'd say it was right approximately in this area. He was walking this way towards us, coming towards us. I thought maybe he was going to the car, but then he went past the car and kept coming towards us. Okay, so why don't you sit, and I'll try to say it again in the mic. So you saw him, you kind of pointed, there's some white, I don't know what that is. It I might don't just know. Be oh, wood. those are old beehives. Probably. Oh, okay. I got so, a bunch of beehives that I, I cleaning out my shed, and I, they were old, and I just threw them out there. Okay, was he kind of coming from that area? Yeah, he was walking like that direction, like towards that way, yeah. Coming All right, that way. and his car was here, but he walked past his car, you said? Yes. And then walked over by the pool? Right. Okay. Do you remember what he was wearing? Um, like baggy shorts. Um, he he'd, he had a shirt on, I thought, before, and he, when he came back, he didn't have a shirt. So when he was approaching the pool, coming out of the wooded area, no shirt? Right. Okay. I wonder why. Yeah, well... Maybe he got himself dirty and maybe he found a stream or something to wash himself off. Maybe it was hot, who knows? Yeah, but you wouldn't leave your shirt behind. No, that's true. But um, with regards to his dress sense, his uh, his wardrobe for 2022 through 2024 and into the future is going to be orange. <laughs> All right, so he's approaching the pool. Does he actually get up to the pool? Yeah, he came up to the pool. And I said, hey, Chandler, I don't have my, I don't have a shirt on. Sure. Because <laughs> I, I go shirtless in my pool. That's kind of why I was waiting for him to leave, because I wanted to have the privacy to get in my pool. Sure. Avert your eyes. Okay. Um, you tell him you don't have a shirt on. What happens next? And he said, well, if it would be all right, I'd like to get in the pool. I'm, you know, kind of sticky and I'm hot. And I remember looking at Dulce because I want to be respectful. And I'm, I said, well, I don't have a problem with it, Dulce, if you don't. And she just kind of was shrugged and, you know, I kind of could tell she didn't really like it, but she just kind of turned and was sort of like, whatever. And so I said, okay. And so then I kind of turned and he got in the pool and he went to the east side of the pool and we kind of went to the west side of the pool okay and was he actively swimming or something no he else? just kind of dipped up and down and kind of was like washing you know like himself off he said it was kind of scratchy you know, on his walk and it was itchy and sticky so he was just kind of like so he, you, you did a motion with your hands yeah, and like you said the word was, wash yeah like he'd dunk down and then he'd kind of like you know be doing like this and dunk down and kind of sweaty twat <laughs> in in a pool with two women yeah sweaty bastard but then again don't forget the sticker true sticky bastard then okay Kind of washing himself, rinsing himself off. Yeah, and then and it was odd because he just seemed really different when he he got in the pool from when he was talking to us before. Different how? Well, he seemed more lucid, like he just seemed more present. Did you say present or pleasant? Present, Thank like you. focused. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. Okay, what happened next? Well, then Dulce was starting to ask him questions because I th think she was concerned maybe he was doing some drugs and I think she just wanted to sort of see if he was. So she started asking him questions and things like that to see how he would respond because while he was gone and we were in the pool, that's what she spoke to me mostly about, is what's going on with him, I'm worried, I don't know why he's acting this way, what's he doing, and so. Just to clear this up though, no paraphernalia or any evidence of drugs was none, ever found? None, none, ever. Okay. And he admitted, he, we, that was one of the questions, she says, if you're doing drugs channel, I'm telling you right now, that's a deal breaker, and if you ever come, and he said, I will never ever bring drugs, drugs to the house, or I don't do drugs, he, 
you know. She okay. confron- I just wanted to declare that. Yeah, up. she confronted him about that. Okay. I wonder if he was a bit of a pothead. I wonder if he did take dr- drugs th- or at least weed. I think he did. I think he did as at well. At least weed. Yeah. I'm not sure about Kat, but that was certainly our first vibe when we were watching his interrogation. We know now he was just acting. He was just trying to act dumb. But it did look as though he was stoned, didn't it? It did, and we picked up on that. Yeah. Just just wonder, and, and it would be interesting to speculate if he does do weed, whether he was high when he murdered his parents. Yeah, but whenever you heard someone killing someone because they're high on weed... Well, and especially your parents. True. I mean, it it does. You know, it is the sort of drug that kind of relaxes any sort of you know antagonism or tension. Tension. But it's possible. It's possible. It's a possibility, but I doubt he was. Yeah, I, I doubt that. I'd Remember, it, it increases paranoia. So he probably felt in, in extremely paranoid to the point where he thought the only answer was to kill his parents. Yeah, but didn't a little voice in his head go off and say, wait a minute, think about what, think about this? I sincerely doubt that. Uh, what happens next? Well, we just started talking, you know, she was worried, like, where was he going to stay? Because he, he thought he lost his job. And she w- was offered to say he could stay maybe at their, her house in town for a while if he needed to. Pardon me, I have to interrupt here. This is all hearsay. Uh, 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 agreed. I'll, I'll go ahead and ask to um, uh, rephrase the question. And uh, um, those, those last responses sure. fall in that category. Okay, first off, whatever happened to the word objection, Your Honour? Instead of, I have to interrupt, this is all hearsay. Why didn't she say objection, Your Honour? That's yeah, how it's done. That's how, what a lawyer should say. Yeah. And also, um, Judge Highland seemed very flustered when he answered that, didn't he? Yeah, maybe he was a bit put out the way she, you know, interrupted. Maybe what crossed his mind was, was what I just said. She didn't use the correct et- etiquette, but... I don't know if you ha- I don't think you have to use the correct etiquette, but it would just be nice, wouldn't it? it? You know, it's respect. Some observation of ceremony. Outside of specifics of the conversation, um, how long was Chandler in the pool? Oh, maybe maybe fifteen minutes ish, okay. uh, roughly. All right, um, and at some point, does he get out of the pool first, or do you? Oh, he got up first. He he was said he was in a hurry. He had to go. That Catherine was getting dinner or something, and so he was like on a mission and had to like let's go and and that and he got out and went to the car and drove off. Okay, and his car that he went to was over there by the oil tank near the wood line. Right. All right. I just want to back up here a second. Um, you said at first, when you first talked with him on the deck when you were working on a project with Dulce, he then left to supposedly go swimming, and then you didn't see him until he walked out of the wood line later. About what was the time gap between there, between the time he said, I'm going to go to the pool, and the time he actually went to the pool? The first time or the second time? Or all together. <laughs> all there was together. So the time he's, he's, you were on the deck working on your project. And he showed up and right. the time and he then left. He, from the time he left you at the deck area until you saw him walk out of the wooded area. Oh. About what was the time frame in there? I'm, I'm guesstimating, you know, maybe 45 minutes, an hour-ish, maybe. I wonder if Cress or Dulcy asked him what the hell he was doing for 45 minutes to an hour when he was supposed to be swimming. I wonder if they actually asked him what the hell he was, you know, he was doing all that time. If they did ask him, he'd probably come, come up with, an, with an, another load of crap. Probably, yeah. He's got an answer for everything, hasn't he? <laughs> he seems to think so. Okay. Yeah, I, it's it's a guesstimate. Okay. It was a while. I, like, it just seemed, to me, it seemed forever because I wanted to get in the pool. Sure. So it just seemed like a long time. And then after he got out of the pool, he got into his vehicle and drove away. Yeah. 
Now, later that day, did you find out that he actually had attempted to contact you prior to coming to your property? Yeah, later, um, I remember seeing the message was blinking on my, my landline. And so I, I pressed it, and then a name came up, and I didn't know what the, I didn't recognize the name, and then I heard Chandler's voice. So he had left me a message, but I didn't realize it until after he'd come and gone, and I listened to it later. So he left you a message or a voicemail? Yeah, and saying he wanted to come and, would, could he come and use the pool? And did you turn that message or, or voicemail over to the Dane County Sheriff's Office? Yes, I did. And did you turn over a true and accurate copy of that message? Yes, it's still on my, it's still on there right now. Okay. I would at this time move Exhibit 64 into evidence. No objection. It is received. One of our Macclesfield mob members, Carmen, has suggested that we um, put some merch on or a t-shirt with it is received written on there. Yeah, I think that might go down well. Yeah, let us know if you'd buy it, guys. <laughs> and I would ask to publish the message to the jury. You may. Is this supposed to be going on? Okay. The um, the screen in front of you shows what the jury's seeing. Oh. No. All right, thank you. That's right there. Hi, Chris. This is Chandler. Um, I just got back with some pretty terrible news from my doctor. Well, boo, fucking who? So I was wondering if I could come by. I don't know, take a couple laps to the pool or hang out, something I'm not having the most ideal day, I suppose. Well, call me back, 920-838-4549. Thank you. Bye. So, if I wanted to sound happy, and I was Chandler Halderson, this is the sort of voice I would be talking in. It seems to be the default voice of his, whether he's happy, sad, whatever. <laughs> Monday, 4.25 p.m. And this was message 116. Yeah. I guess. July 7th, the next day, that Tuesday, do you receive any communication from Chandler? Not directly from Chandler, no. Okay. But I, I'd heard otherwise that he was trying to come out and I was having trouble with my phone for some reason, wasn't working my landline and I was kind of feeling stressed and didn't really want to deal with anybody at the, the farm that day. All right, and so did Chandler end up coming out on the 7th? No. Or, I'm sorry, that's the, yeah, the seventh, okay. Um, later in the course of this investigation, um, various items were found at, on your property um, that you were made aware of. Is that fair? Yes. Let me inquire, counsel. I think I think the jury entered at 8.45. We're a little over 90 minutes long. This might be a good moment to break. Sure, that's Just fine. because we're moving into another subject area. Sure. And we still have cross-examination. I don't want to tax everybody further uh, than about 90 minutes plus 10. So we'll take our morning break at this point, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll come back in 15 minutes. All rise for the jury. Two rounds of toast and a nice cup of tea later. Attorney Raymond. Thank you. Um, Cress, I'm going to approach you and show you a series of pictures of things found on your property and talk to you about those. There's 
First, I'm gonna show you what has been marked as exhibits 58 through 63. Do you just wanna flip through those? Can I pick yeah, you absolutely. That is exactly the way you act when someone's showing you their holiday pictures, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions here. Um, and we're going to have testimony about this later, but Exhibit 58 um, is a garbage can found in the woods. Uh, did you keep a Rubbermaid or a black rubber garbage can in your woods? No. And Exhibit 59, is that, what is that a picture of? Um, that's an old, uh, I don't know if it's fuel oil or gas, it's for scrap. I just haven't took it to the salvage yard yet. Okay. Um, did you keep any tools in Exhibit 59? In there? Yes. No. What is picture 60? Um, that's the entrance to my driveway and... I don't recognize the car. There's a bag, and that's where I keep my recycling and my trash. And that bag appears to be a Target bag? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. And 61 is a close-up of the same? Right. I think Chandler knew exactly what he was doing by depositing body parts on Cressy's property, and he just didn't care. He could have implicated her. He, he could, could have got have. her in serious trouble. He could have, but... When the police started finding all the bodies, he probably thought they would never be found. Possibly, yeah, but, you know, dumping them on the property of your girlfriend's mother's girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? That's low. You, you take, you, this, how big is Wisconsin? It's massive, right? <laughs> there's loads of places he could have dumped them. And he chose Cressy's property. I mean, yeah. that just goes to show you the the lack of empathy or humility that he has i mean he could have used the water he could have used lake he could have used the forest could do could have done yeah but no this guy is completely brainless we thought chris watts was a clothead but this guy takes the biscuit doesn't he he certainly does um exhibit 60 there's a items that were found in that Target bag. Did those items belong to your house? No. Did you uh, throw those items away? No. And your father is 94, you said? Yes. Only other person that lives there? Right, well my brother, what he was at, at assisted living at the time. Okay, um, so your father would take great effort to go and throw anything away outside. <laughs> no, he couldn't. State at this time would move exhibits 58 through 63 into evidence. Any objection? None. They are received. And I will ask you about these in a minute, but if you want to just look through those in the meantime, I'm going to publish 58 through 63 to the jury. And Ms. Lasai, uh, the little screen in front of you will have what I'm showing you the jurors. What do I have to do? <laughs> well, the clerk is working on that. That second group of photos that I showed you, how would you describe those as a group? As a group, well, this is my the tobacco shed that you called the barn. It's the shed. Looks better now, though. <laughs> Why does it look better now? Well, be oh, yeah, because I cleaned it out. I got a big dumpster. Been meaning to do it for some years now. Cress is like me, isn't she? She's a to it person. <laughs> she sure is. I'll get around to it. Yeah, just like you do sometimes. Yeah, but but actually I do. I'll say to it, yeah, I'll get around to it, but I eventually do get around to it and I do it, don't I? Yeah. And Ma it's... Might take years. But you do it. <laughs> I didn't get through it because I got sure. a little upset there for that, a second. Okay. 
Um, but 66 through 70 are pictures of your barn before you cleaned it out. That's correct. Um, and 71 through 74 are pictures of something that you later found in your barn during the clean out. That's right. Okay. I would move to admit pictures 66 through 74. Any objection? No, Your Honor. They are received. She does look upset, doesn't she? She looks really upset, but then again, she's gonna be. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's been used and she's had to come and testify in a court of law. Yeah. I mean, she she didn't want to do any of this stuff, but unfortunately, this complete prick has, uh, has forced it on her, hasn't he? He has, and just think of what the police actually found on that property. I don't even want to think about that, to be honest. While you have identified the exhibits and testified about them, uh, the ability to publish them to the jury requires the state to go through them with you again, but with the jury able to see those photos at this time. Okay, thank you. It's never perfect because of the glare, but um, Chris, the, this is the garbage can picture exhibit 58 that I showed you that was found in the woods, but it was not yours. No. And how would you describe exhibit 59? It's an old fuel tank that's been sitting there for a while. We're going to take it to salvage, and you have to cut a hole in there so that they know you don't fill it with concrete or something, so they want to look in there. Okay. Um, and again, you didn't keep anything such as tools inside of it. No. And exhibit 60. Uh, is that a picture at the end of your driveway? Right. Um, and is this where you keep the garbage cans? Yeah, that's where I put the trash and the recycling. Now, during the time of this, in the first week of July, um, did you have an experience of your garbage cans being moved? No, not that I'm aware of. I don't, you know, I don't recall. I don't even know if I took trash out that week. Okay. Um, so you do not recall a day when they may have been at the road and then somebody put them back? No, I'm not aware of that. That's okay. But that could have happened, you know, just meaning because Dulce sometimes, like, if the trash is out and she goes out, sometimes she'll put it back, and I don't know about it. That could have happened. I don't know. Sure, fair enough. Um, but there's a Target bag here. Do you normally keep your trash outside of your garbage cans? No. I would I would have put it in the trash. All right. And that's Exhibit 60. Exhibit 61. Uh, just a close-up of Exhibit 60. Right. Those black bins make me think of the TARDIS. Well, if they're anything like the TARDIS, there's probably a whole waste and recycling plant in both of them. <laughs> All right, and then I showed you Exhibit 62, stuff that was found inside of that parking bag. Um, some rags with the substance on them. Did you throw away those rags? No. And Exhibit 63, just them separated out. Right. Moving on, Exhibit 66. How would you describe Exhibit 66? Well, that's the north side of my shed. Well, I've got to say, if that's a shed, then we live in a bloody Wendy house because that is the biggest shed I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it looks more like a house or something. A barn. Yeah. But yeah, that's massive. And my little lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And exhibit 67? Yeah, it's just showing you the entrance there on the north side. Exhibit 68. Yep, that's the, the messy, messy shed. And uh, Exhibit 69, more of the same? Right. 69, dude! Exhibit 70, there's an item here along the back wall, kind of by some boards. Um, yeah, there's there's a bird bath there. Can you tell at all from this angle what was behind the bird bath? Um, well, there's a rifle there. And at some 
point you discover a rifle in your barn? Yes. Do you keep guns in your barn? Not normally. My dad sometimes he'd keep a pellet gun up there, but he hasn't been walking for a few years, so. So what did you do when you, well, first off, when did you first see this gun? Well, I was organizing along the wall, you know, like I say, I was cleaning out my shed and I wanted to go through these like garden tools because I, you know, making sure I still use them, were they broken when I was going to throw them away. So I would, and then I was organizing, putting lumber where the lumber goes, the recycling where the recycling goes. And so I li lifted up a board and I saw a barrel of a gun and I, I thought, huh. Right away, I thought, what's my dad? What, what the heck has he got his pellet gun over here? So I, I picked it up by the barrel and looked at it, and I, I right away recognized it wasn't a gun that I'd ever saw or seen ever before. I wonder if that is the same gun that he received from his friend, you know, the guy who was in the military. It could be. Or whether it was a different one. Not sure. Let us know in the comments, guys. And just to be clear for the jury, this gun, before you lifted it up, was behind a board? Yes, it was behind us. A bunch of, there was like maybe four or five different boards there. Okay. So upon realizing you don't know where this gun came from, what do you do? Well, the first thing is I just felt sort of this sick feeling, and I set it back down, and then I went to ask my father just to make sure that he didn't know about any gun in the shed. And I went and asked, and he said, well, what does it look like, or whatever? And I said, well, Dad, I'm just gonna call the police. And then I called Krista, the head of the, the investigation. She left me a number, and I, I called her and spoke with her and told her what I'd found, and she told me that she was gonna send somebody out. Okay, and do you remember roughly what month Oh, it was um, it was in the middle of October-ish because I, ha I, I wanted to clean out the shed earlier, but <laughs> the police were there for so long, I, my raspberries started, so it was after the raspberries were done, which is, was sometime in the middle of, middle of end of October-ish. Okay. I will bet you the house that Chandler's fingerprints are still on that rifle to this day. They, pro they probably are. Yeah. All right, so it was a few months later. Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you Exhibit 71. Is that a picture of the gun that you found in your barn? It's kind of a glare. Oh, I'm sorry. It is glare. Yeah. It, it looks to be. Okay. Do you want to look at the actual photo? Yeah, that would be. I can do that. Helpful, but it, it looks similar. Yeah, it does look like an assault rifle, that doesn't it? Yeah, it does yeah. very much. I'm pretty sure it is the same gun. Yes. Ms. Raymond, if you want to show that to the jury as you walk back towards the Elmo. Remember the Elmo. I beg your pardon. Bless you. Excuse me. And exhibit 72. Let's see if I get that card be up a little better. Is that just the close up of the same? Yes. And then I actually will publish 73 and 74. So did the police then in October, after you found the gun, come and retrieve the gun? Yes. And in July, when Chandler was on your farm, um, did you have your barn or your shed locked at all? No. No further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you. Good morning. Hi. The defense have finally piped up. Yeah, but I don't think they're going to get much. Probably not, no. But in terms of this court case, it's probably a cause for celebration, although it's more a cause to go and drown yourself in a pissing river, isn't it? <laughs> it is. 
Picking up where you just left off, do you ever lock or close up that shed or barn? I haven't for some years. When I used to go to Florida in the winter, I would close it and lock it, but I haven't been there for a while. Didn't she just answer that question? She did, yeah. I think uh, the defence needs to clean out the lug holes, do you? Yeah, and think of a better strategy. So, no. And is it fair to say that before you got the garbage bin and did the major cleaning of the shed, you didn't know exactly every item that was in there, right? No, not every single item, no. And you testified that there was a delay in getting the garbage bin and cleaning out that shed because the police were there for a while. That's correct. How long were they there in possession of your property or on your property? Whew, seemed like forever. Um, a couple of weeks at least, maybe, maybe longer. And they had closed off that area to you? Yes, they, I mean, they got kind of upset every time I come up with a lawnmower because you know, I couldn't even mow my lawn and it was frustrating. So, but they pretty much kept me by my house. They didn't really want me anywhere around. I can completely understand Cress's uh, frustration with that, can't you? Yeah, I mean, it's a home, you know. Yeah, but then again, you know, it's a crime scene and it has to be preserved and the police have to guard it. So, you know, it's six of one and a half a dozen of the other, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. And was it your understanding that they were searching that area at that time? Yeah, they were searching my whole property. They served me with a, a warrant. Now, moving back in time a little bit to 4th of July weekend, um, I think I heard you testified that uh, Chandler Halderson was not acting like himself. Is that right? That's correct. And it was for that, that observation that you and Dulce might have thought, oh, is he doing some drugs? Is that right? That, yeah, it was, it was a question because we couldn't figure out why he seemed a little off. And you had never seen him like that before, right? No. And normally he's sort of a, a quiet, nerdy kid, right? Yeah, that's a good description. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. Uh, may Miss Lesai be excused at this time? She's excused. But not released? Correct. That means that uh, you're still under the subpoena with which you've been served, so you can't discuss your testimony with anyone, but you're excused unless recalled by the state at any time. You can stay in touch with them. Thank you very much. All right.